Today we are uh, at Onivo, a Dutch restaurant, because we are invited by uh, Delta, Delta Wines and Palas. And we are here to taste some uh, new um, uh, Californian wines. And one of them, uh, or a few of them, are by Maggie Hawk. And my guest today is Tim. And Tim, you can tell us all about the, uh, the winery and uh, the wines that we're going to taste today. So uh, maybe a quick introduction from your side? Sure. Uh, I'm Tim. I work for Jackson Family Wines. So the Jackson family are the family that own, own Maggie Hawk. Uh, our, our home is California, Sonoma, uh, but we also have wineries which, uh, which happen to be in different, different regions uh, within California and Oregon, and then a handful of international estates as well. Uh, so Maggie Hawk is based in the Anderson Valley, which is a sub-region, an ABA as we call them in the States, uh, a sub-region of Mendocino County. And actually the most important thing to note about it is how cool climate it is. It's, uh, it's a valley just 15 miles in length and it runs north, it runs southeast to northwest with the northwest end being less than 50 miles from the Pacific Ocean. So that is a really key, uh, a key part of what makes our wines at Maggie Hawk. So you've got a lot of influence by the ocean. Big, big ocean influence. And, and what you get is, you get these ocean fogs that come down the Navarro River and funnel into the Anderson Valley. And that brings a, a really, really important cooling influence to the valley. Uh, and as a result, you see very elegant styles of Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, uh, and also it's become the home to some really decent sparkling wine uh, from California. So your uh, Chardonnay and Pinot Noir are obviously uh, the darlings of the uh, estate. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what we're uh, going to uh, taste today and what's going to be imported? Uh, in the Netherlands. So we have I some can. bottles here. Yeah. yeah, so we have, we actually have three wines that uh, Delta and Inger at Delta, um, who's been fantastic, um, kind of really promoting California. She's taking on three of our wines. And uh, as I said, there's a Chardonnay, which, uh, which we'll be tasting today, along with these two Pinot Noirs as well. Really, what uh, I need to get across is, is how um, delicate and elegant style of, of Chardonnay and Pinot Noir these wines are. Uh, I mentioned the cool climate. Uh, our winemaker Sarah also has, uh, Sarah Wuthrich, she also has a very um, delicate touch with the wines, so uh, minimal in intervention to a degree, uh, unfined, unfiltered. Uh, judicious use of oak so she doesn't use too much too much new oak because she really wants the sense of place to shine through in the wines. Uh, the, in terms of the Pinot Noirs I've got in front of me it's very interesting so it's all small batch very very small production we have five or six cuvées we're a Pinot Noir specialist that I mentioned we've got one Chardonnay which is gaining ground in the valley. With the Pinot Noirs more or less 500 cases made of each cuvee. So again, important to understand, it's handcrafted small batch wines. So with the Unforgettable and the Storming, which I've got here, named, by the way, Maggie Hawk was Barbara Banke, our chairman and proprietor. It was her mm -hmm. favorite racehorse. So each wine is named after a descendant mm -hmm. from Maggie Hawk. So the only difference between Storming and Unforgettable, same vineyard, Maggie Hawk Estate, right at that north western tip of, of the valley uh, same clones used just uh, a little bit more oak on the unforgettable a little bit more new oak mm -hmm. and actually most of the slopes are north east facing there's some there's some southern facing slopes for unforgettable okay. so it's really interesting trying them against each other and just seeing how the slight nuances change purely based on, on that, that difference. Um, so, and you're from Europe as well, so um, interesting question always to ask is, if you compare Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, and especially yours of course, with uh, the ones we know from Burgundy, how would you um, say that they're different, or maybe they're not so different, and more like each other? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I think it, it's often a, a topic that comes up, and particularly if you're making Chardonnay and Pinot Noir in more elegant styles. But what we, 
from the US when we're talking about our wines, uh, really try and get across is that we might use um, French clones or even Burgundy clones mm -hmm. uh, to gain the parts of Burgundian Pinot Noir that we like, but the soils, the aspects, the influence is 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 so very different yeah. in California. You already so, mentioned the ocean, like yeah, there's not much ocean in ocean, Burgundy that you can... Uh... The incredible amount of different soil types that we have. Um, we have we have volcanic influence in certain parts of California as well. So they really have their own uh, style driven from from the terroir. Okay. There are likenesses to Burgundy. So it's obviously. the best of both worlds. I Let's think so. Like we think so. And that's obviously what we'll, we'll tell you. Yeah. yeah, we're going to taste it today. So. Um, and you mentioned already we also have a Chardonnay, which is not in the picture, but we're also going to taste that. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about uh, how that's going, how it's developing your Chardonnay. Yeah, yeah the Chardonnay, so Chardonnay in the Anderson Valley is, uh, you know, I think Pinot Noir is planted probably up to about 70% of the plantings of Pinot Noir. Uh, there's some Alsatian varietals as well, but Chardonnay is, is really starting to gain more of a, a foothold mm -hmm. and quality Chardonnay coming out of the Anderson Valley is becoming much more of a thing. So uh, our Chardonnay, again, following the lines of the Pinot Noir, elegant in style, uh, about 20, 25% new French oak. We only use French oak. And what typifies Chardonnay from the Anson Valley is this minerality you get in the wine, which mainly comes from the soil. So uh, Bear Wallow and Wolfie are basically types of fractured sandstone mm -hmm. quartz. Uh, so the 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 roots deep dive down really deep to get any nutrients there and you really feel the minerality coming through in in the wines particularly in the chardonnay okay good so um yeah i would like to thank you for your time and these uh, this uh, beautiful explanation um we're gonna taste them uh, in a little bit and then uh, of course we're gonna uh, write a nice review about that and uh, tell uh, the audience what they can expect uh, I would also like to thank uh, Delta Wines, of course, uh, and Palas, who is going to be uh, uh, importing and selling them. Um, so uh, for the uh, audience in Europe, just uh, stay tuned uh, and watch out for these uh, beautiful Pinot Noirs and Chardonnays. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're, we're really excited about them launching in the Netherlands. Very good. Thank you.